Hi, this is Mrs. Hogarth. I want to talk to you a little bit today about value. And what value means is not how much something's worth in art. What it means in art is the lightness and the darkness, how light or dark something is. Sometimes it's in between. So what we're going to do today is we're going to practice what we call value scale, some boxes basically that are even steps from light to dark. And then we're going to do a drawing using those values. So when I make my value scale, I usually go from white to black, and I usually start in the, with the middle value. And the reason I do that is because it kind of gets me warmed up and able to control my pencil a little bit. If my fingers are stiff or my brain's not quite working, it relaxes me a little bit. You can always lighten or darken something when you start in the middle. And you notice I just laid in one value and it's pretty light, but there's a lot of pencil lines. So what we want to do is kind of get rid of some of those pencil lines. And the way you do that is change direction. I'm going to add a layer and you notice that's getting darker and I change direction with my marks. And that kind of blends those marks together so you don't see so many pencil lines and it gives it a little more richness and a depth. The key to doing a value scale on really nice smooth values are layers. So if I lay this down again, now my next box is going to be a little darker, but you notice I'm not making it darker. I'm not pressing really hard. That will dent your paper. You don't want that. I'm just laying in a basic medium value, then I change direction. I'm still not pressing any harder, but I'm building up my graphite or my pencil marks, and that's what makes it darker. So I'm just laying in another value going another direction. Now what you want to do is you want to control the pencil and, and your marks, so you lay in another one, and I want to bring my value all the way out to the edge of each of the square. I want to make sure that I'm trying to keep the value even inside each of my sections. Let's tidy it up a little bit and then go to the next one. But you can see that my first one is clearly lighter than the second one. Now I go to my next one which should be darker. It's not going to be darker yet though, right? Remember we change direction, make my marks close together, I'm holding my pencil maybe a little bit tighter. That'll help you make a little darker mark, but you don't want to go too dark. You want to create the darker value by adding another layer of pencil marks. Now those are the same, right? If you blur your eyes, those are practically the same. So look, I'm just going to start and add another layer. And look how nice and smooth that is. Nice and smooth. Just add another layer. Now my last layer is going to be the same thing, same process, and notice that I'm holding my pencil a little closer to the end. It gives me a little bit more control and I can press a little bit more, but notice I'm not starting out really dark. Build those layers up gradually. Build that value up one step at a time. Now that's pretty close to being the same value there, almost a little lighter. So I'm going to add another layer. I'm also going to tidy that up by making that square a little bigger. Come back in, go in another direction. You can go diagonal direction too. You don't have to just go horizontal and vertical. Now that's nice and rich and dark and I don't have a lot of pencil lines. So now when I go to my lighter values, I hold my pencil a little further away from the tip and I lay in my values very lightly. So I'm going to move now to the lighter values. Move my hand away from the tip of the pencil and very lightly hit that. And I want to make sure I'm going lighter than the one before it. Nice, even steps. Fill the whole space. And my last one is going to be hard. Look how far away I'm holding the pencil from the end. And I'm hardly touching the paper. And in a minute, you're going to see that I'm going to add another square. So I have a white, so I go from white to black all the way across. And there you go, white to black.
values, a whole series of values all the way across from light to dark, nice even steps. So now let's use those values in a drawing. And you notice my light's coming from the top left and I'm sitting on a white box. Okay, so the same thing, be aware of your light source, build your values. Now you notice my pencil marks are kind of going around the tennis ball so that that gives it kind of a spherical look as well, or volume, it makes it look three dimensional. So the value that I add to this, my shading, gives it volume, but also the way I make my marks wrap around it. So now I'm on a white box and I'm gonna add that because what I have is I have a, a shadow falling onto the box. We call that a cast shadow. And then I have a highlight where the light hits the actual sphere or tennis ball. And then I have my um, core shadow. That's the darkest part, the furthest away from the light source. And then I have a reflected light. I'll show you that in a second. So when I draw this, what's really going to make this tennis ball stand out and the white box stand out is my negative space, the area around the tennis ball. And now it really stands out and pops by giving that background or the table. My table is a wooden table that's actually darker than my white box. This would look different if this was all sitting on a white piece of paper. So now watch this tennis ball, the light side of the tennis ball especially, really kind of have a sharper edge and pop out. And you can see that I'm not too worried about pencil lines in that background and building that up, but the white box has an edge and I'm gonna get rid of that contour. See what I just erased? That underneath the sphere, right down there, my light's bouncing off the box and back onto the sphere. And that's what I have there. And I'm just kind of hinting at the little tennis ball and the marks, the texture. Tidy it up a little bit. Get that rounder. And now I've noticed, you notice I've used all of those values that we did in the value scale in my tennis ball drawing. So find something fun to draw. Set it on something, doesn't have to just be one thing, and, and do a value scale and then add those values to an actual object today.